Would you like to become a software engineer but you don't have coding skills yet? Stick to this video, you'll find out that it is possible. I just had an interview with my friend, he's a software engineer at company Salesforce, which is company number one as a CRM system. He started his career as a quality assurance engineer without coding skills. My friend Alexi Wei, he is a software engineer at company Salesforce, which is company number one to work for. I don't know, I don't remember, 2018, 2017, right? And um, yeah, one of the top companies. However, which is interesting, Alexi, he doesn't have a CS degree and he came from a math tech uh, background. You know. So, can you tell your story? So I think it, it all started when we came to this country with my wife in 2012 when we had to figure out what to do uh -huh. in a new place, how to live, how to survive, how to make money. It was pretty scary. It was, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you have nothing and you have family, you have a little baby to right. feed and support. And I, was, I started looking around and I found uh, on the internet about quality assurance engineering where mm -hmm. it, but it basically it takes a few months to study and you're ready to go and get a job and you make decent money. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. So, okay, you finished your uh, school, your course. Uh, did you find your job right away or like, what happened then? Uh, no. So, it was a three month uh, course. Mm -hmm. And during that course, I, they taught us about UTES. Mm -hmm. So I started working on UTES, mm -hmm. applying my knowledge and getting some experience. Was it hard to get into UTES and get your first uh, paid project? Uh, for me, yes. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, uh, oh yeah, there's such a thing. And I went without any preparation, just, just give me a job, give me mm -hmm. projects, you know. And, I, and they had, uh, the thing it was called sandbox, where you, where they expect you to show um, your knowledge, mm -hmm. your experience. So basically, it was kind of a test, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. some kind of test, and it failed, it failed easily. From the first time. The first time. Okay, and how long it took you like to to pass it and to get the paid project? Uh, probably I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks at most. Mm. So after it failed, I went on the internet. I watched a couple of videos. I read a couple of documents uh, about their expectations and yeah the, the next sandbox I passed I passed in the top two forms. Nice. Okay and then you started getting the paid project right away. I see them. I mean it might take maybe a couple of days mm -hmm. first, but yeah it happens pretty fast. Okay cool. So you start working on new tests and because I know that many people can say like, oh, you test, I tried it, yeah, it didn't work out for me or whatsoever. Can you tell like, how did it work for you? From my experience, um, after I passed the sandbox, I started getting paid projects and I did pretty well. There's certain ranks. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it used to be like that, I don't know about now, but there, there used to be like this rank, rank system where mm -hmm. they rank you as a tester based on your work that you've done. And I was able to get up to a couple of next levels pretty fast because mm -hmm. I was getting really good projects that worked really well. And the more you work, the more the, the more you show your work, like that, that you're doing good, that you can read the requirements, that you can write bugs, that you can find valid bugs, very important bugs, the more work they give you. Mm -hmm. So I started getting Lots of projects. I would get I don't know, maybe five, six new projects every day. A oh, lot. Wow. How much you made at that time? Um, I think at my peak, I was making around uh, eighteen hundred to up to two thousand dollars a month. Oh wow! So you could make it uh, living on that at that time. Yeah, we lived on that money. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's uh, 2013, 2014, and our rent was like eight fifty. Oh, yeah, yeah, tough, but still you can make, you can make it. Uh, okay, so 
then what what happened then how did you get your actual job so after a few months on new test when i got some experience i started working for a real job so i posted my resume on a couple of resources i started getting calls mm -hmm. then so i getting a uh, phone screening schedule uh, yeah i i i felt quite a few of them okay so you did get your first job from the first time oh no <laughs> it took me a few few attempts here yeah. okay classic Okay, cool. So, do you remember how many uh, interviews, inter inter interviews you failed before you actually get your first offer? I failed maybe four or five home screenings, and then uh, I failed one uh, on-site interview. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, what happened then? Like how? Um, do you remember this process? Like, how did you get your first offer? So, yeah, after all my, my failures, mm -hmm. it was pretty depressing, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I told my wife, I was like, you know, I need, I need a one week rest. I'm going to take one week. I'm not going to do anything related to job search or whatsoever. And uh, what happened was during that week, this one week ago, she started calling me every day, a few times a day. Oh, wow. And I was like, wow, what is happening? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let, let's answer the call and talk. Maybe, I don't know. And then she was like, you know, there's uh, this company that are looking for a man on QE, a quality engineer. Would you be interested? I was like, yeah, of course, sure. So she sent my, in, uh, my resume over to the uh, hiring company. And I think maybe a couple of days later, they uh, scheduled a uh, phone screen for mm -hmm. Skype. So, yeah, um, I had this uh, home screen, it went really well. And I think what helped me was uh, that I already had experience on new test. Uh -huh. So when they asked me a question, how would you test this or that, or what, how, so how would you install a um, iOS app on your phone? I already knew that I, I, I had real hands-on experience and it went really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of days later, I think they scheduled an on-site Mm -hmm. It was a three round interview. First round was with the quality engineer. The second round was with the developer and quality engineer. And the third round was with the yeah, hiring manager. Okay, cool. And then you got an offer. Yes. How quick did they get back to you with an offer? You know, um, I was in the bus on my way home from the interview. I think it took maybe. 20 or 30 minutes for that too. Wow, well, that was really quick. That was really quick. Okay, cool. So, well then, I assume that your life has has been changed a lot. <laughs> yeah, right? Drastically. Okay, so then you start working as a quality engineer. Manual career basically, mm -hmm. right? Um, like, how long it took you to become a software engineer within this company? I think it took around two years mm -hmm. for me because um, initially it was a six month contract and it got extended for another six months. And during this year, I worked, I worked primarily as a manual fault engineer. But then I got hired as a full time mm -hmm. employee. And then um, I, always, I always had in mind this uh, career path, you know, that for manual, I wanted to eventually get into the um, automation, mm -hmm. become an automation engineer. So uh, while working uh, in the evenings, I would uh, take online courses, like learning about automation, uh, taking programming languages, learning programming languages. And um, yeah, after two years of sales, um, after my two years at Salesforce, they transitioned to what's called hybrid engineering model, mm -hmm. where they don't differentiate between developers and engineer, uh, quality engineers. Mm -hmm. They only have software engineer, which is which which is supposed to write code and test it. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, uh, once the transition happened, an opportunity came out my way. So they um, 
they asked me if I wanted to stay and transfer to become an engineer. And uh, I said yes. And then they gave me my first project, which was uh, uh, a project in Python. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I was asked to start writing code. It mm -hmm. was my very first uh, project, my, my, my very first like real coding project. How long it took you to, to do your first commit? I mean, it took me a while. It took me like maybe a couple of weeks to get the project set up locally. You know, it was it was it was pretty like uh, intense. You know, it was my first time doing everything. Wow! Wow! Awesome. Okay, so now you're a software engineer at one of the top uh, companies in the world. So what's the next? Like, uh, what's the next in your mind? There is always room to grow. You know, um, I like what I'm doing. I like where I am right now. And I would love to proceed with that, to get better, to learn more, mm -hmm. to like, to grow as an engineer. All right, Alexi, thank you very much. Uh, and in the end, could you please give up some advice of career path? Like, uh, for example, we have a bunch of people who is interested to transition to software engineering, yeah, from quality assurance, from nothing, uh, people who is in tech but still want to transition to software engineering. What would you recommend to do right now? Probably start exploring, start learning. Uh, I know there are few resources where you can learn about quality assurance, but if you are already in the field, you're doing, for example, manual. If you're a manual quality engineer. Mm -hmm. Start learning. Start. Pick a language, start learning programming, um, depending, maybe you, if you're already working and then if they have automation, ask your peer engineers, ask them what they use for automation and uh, pick that language, start learning, uh, pick a uh, framework, depending on your app or on your software, uh, start learning about the different frameworks. And then applying knowledge. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe write a first test and go show it to your peer engineers or to your manager and ask for feedback. What if they don't have any framework and don't have any test automation in place? Then um, that's a good question. Yes. And then learn about it yourself. For mm -hmm. example, uh, I mean, you can Google it. What is the best uh, framework? I mean, for web application or right. for a mobile application or for a backend, learn it. Write something, show it to your manager. Here we go, guys. Basically, what you can just do right now, you can pick any languages that you're comfortable with, or uh, maybe your company is well, primarily working with. Uh, learn the test automation framework, show your manager, boom, that's it. Sounds easy. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, guys, and see you soon in our uh, stay to our channel. Subscribe, hit the subscribe button and the like. Thank you very much. Bye.